I'm Mark Spagnolo from TheWoodWhisperer.com. This is a companion video to the Wood Whisperer column featured in Popular Woodworking Magazine. The video and the column feature thoughts, ideas, and techniques from me, The Wood Whisperer. Masking tape, or more specifically blue painter's tape, is really a woodworker's best friend. It seems like every day I find a new use for this stuff, and as a result, I buy it in bulk. It's good to have a lot of these around. So let's take a look at some of the more common things that I use this tape for, and uh, hopefully that'll spark your imagination, and you could write me and tell me some of the great things you've discovered that blue tape is great for. Now, plywood is a great building material. We use it all the time. But what's the problem with it? You always have this exposed edge that we need to deal with. And one great way to deal with that is to cover it with solid wood material. This way you can put a profile on the edge and sort of give it the look of solid wood. Now, there are three ways that I like to attach material like this to the plywood. And the first, the most obvious, is clamping. Now, the problem is, in, that doesn't work for all situations. I mean, there's sometimes where you just can't get a set of clamps in there. So there are two other ways that I like to attach this edge banding, and both of them involve blue tape. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have a good amount of glue on both surfaces. And the first technique involves using blue tape as the clamp itself. So let's put our edge banding on, center it as best we can. I put blue tape on the face of the edge banding, grab both sides, and just pull down. Give it a lot of pressure and then rub it in with your thumbs and go every couple of inches this way. Okay, now this isn't as good as clamping, let's say you can't get as much clamping pressure, but in a lot of cases for edge banding where it's non-structural, it's really just dressing up the edge, it's usually good enough. Now in some cases, the blue tape clamp system just isn't gonna work. Uh, certain types of molding, you just, you'll never be able to get the uh, tape over the surface the right way to apply the pressure that you need to apply. So the answer to that is usually some type of a nailer. The problem with a nailer, even though those are little tiny pin nails, they still make a pretty sizable hole that needs to be filled. And when you fill that, especially on woods like walnut, oak, that have sort of an open pore structure, what happens? Well, that filler not only gets into the hole, but it gets into the surrounding pores. And the real bad part of that is you don't even know it until you put the finish on and you see this little blotch spot that's there. So uh, it's a huge problem. So what I like to do is a little bit of preventative maintenance. Any place I'm going to put a brad nail, I'm going to place a little bit of blue tape. All right, and let's drive in a few brads. All right, so the brands are now shot through the tape into the wood and into the ply. So it's holding the edging securely, and now we just need to worry about filling those holes. So I have some walnut filler here that I'm going to use. And what I'll actually do, just so that I could show you as an example, is fill every other one with this walnut. Because that's the color, ultimately, that we want. Now the other two holes, I'm actually going to use a light colored filler for, and it's just so that you can see it better. You'll be able to see how uh, the material hasn't spread into the grain around that hole. And over here, I'm actually going to fill one that has no tape on it, just to show you what we're going to confront if we use that method. Well, now that the filler's dry, let's peel the tape off and see what we've got. So I'm going to give the surface a quick sanding just to see where we're at. So we have three good examples here. This is a hole that was filled without any tape. And you can see what we have around the outside is grain that's been filled with the, uh, with the filler itself. And of course our hole is filled too, but this is something around here that's going to become a major issue when it comes time to finish. Now this is the filler when I use the lighter colored material so that you can actually see what we've done. No filler around the outside, a nicely filled hole, and it's pretty obvious here. Now, the, the reason I did that, you'll see in a second. Right here is one of them that was filled with the walnut filler, which is a much better match for the walnut, clearly. And you can barely even see that there's a hole filled here. And because there's no stain around the outside, it becomes that much more invisible. But believe me, there is a hole there, even though you can't see it. 
Now finishing casework like this can be a real pain. Once everything is together and you have all these vertical partitions in place, how do you finish the inside of this? It's just, you know, it's a nightmare. So what a lot of people opt to do is pre-finish the boards and then you assemble them, glue them together, and that way you don't have to worry about it. It's already done. But the big drawback there is once you start pre-finishing, you have issues with exposed joinery. For instance, this dado here is wide open and we have to figure out a way to protect that. So, blue tape to the rescue. This is what I usually do. I take a nice long piece of blue tape and I try to put it into the dado and center it. As you push down, you'll start to see if you're centered and you can move it left or right. Okay, push the ends in and then start going into the middle and make contact with the bottom of the dado. Just work your way across. Okay, and what we've effectively done now is sealed the bottom and the sides of this dado in one shot like that. So now you could spray, you could wipe on an oil finish, whatever you need to do across the whole surface, and this dado is nice and protected. Now whether you pre-finish or not, you still want to protect your surfaces from glue squeeze out, which almost inevitably is going to happen as you place your workpiece into the dado and clamp everything down. So to avoid this, what I like to do is during the dry assembly, I put everything together, make sure it's nice and secure, and I'll, I'll put clamps on it so that everything is in its final position. Take another long piece of tape, it's the same length or greater as the workpiece, and I'll actually stretch it across the joint like so. You want to go right up to the joint and start with the bottom. Okay, take a second piece. And stretch that on the vertical partition. Now if you do this on all joints and both sides of the joint, you've essentially masked off the material so that if any glue squeeze out occurs, it's not going to get all over the place and you can easily scrape it away and you're not going to spread it around. So as you disassemble everything, you'll see that the joints, where it needs to be exposed, are exposed and where it needs to be protected, it's protected. Now if you've ever done any veneering before, you know that in most cases the veneer does not come in the width that you need. Uh, so we have to figure out a way to get these pieces together so that that joint is flawless. People won't even be able to know that it's made from two different pieces. It's really the key. And what I like to do is first I make sure that those edges are nice and straight. You do that either on the jointer with the pieces bundled together or you could just use a straight edge and cut it with a knife. Okay, so these have already been done and let me show you where blue tape comes in. Now obviously there's no clamp in the world that can get this clamped up properly. So my favorite way to do it with blue tape. Okay, so I press the tape onto one side, so it's pretty, pretty secure. And I do this sort of three-fingered positioning here where my middle finger holds the piece down to the original workpiece. The other two fingers help to position and bring this piece in as I stretch the piece over. Okay, now this tape will give a little bit stretches just a little bit and it wants to retract back to that position when I'm, when I'm done and that's good because that's going to keep these things clamped together. There's a little bit of elasticity there and we're going to take advantage of it. So every couple of inches I will stretch the tape like so. Okay, so once we have a basic stitch pattern across, I'm going to run a piece along the entire seam. That's going to serve as a dam for the glue. Now believe it or not, we're going to glue these pieces together so that they never come apart. If you don't do that, there's always a chance that after the glue up uh, that they can start to separate a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that they're attached to one another so that doesn't happen. So you sort of form a little tent like this. Get your glue. push it in with my finger, and I switch fingers as I go because I really don't want to drive much of this glue into the wood itself, the face, because that can be an issue later on when we do the finishing. 
And once we set it flat, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get some kind of squeeze out here. So I take a putty knife and I run it along and get all that excess off. I don't want that on the wood. Make sure it's nice and flat and then I'll take another piece of tape along the edge like so. And this is going to stop the pieces from uh, folding up on one another. So you'll be able to rub with your finger like this and any spot that is doing that, you could press on it and get it into the proper position. Now there's another great use for blue tape that involves cutting. And a lot of times when you cut across the grain, you're going to get tear out at some point during that cut. So it's a good idea to know how you can prevent that if you've tried everything else, like using a blade with finer teeth, uh, zero clearance inserts, things like that. If you're still getting a little bit of tear out, blue tape is going to help you out. So here's what I'm going to do as a sample here. I'm going to use a circular saw and make a cross cut on this piece of plywood. But what I'm going to do is I'm only going to protect half of the cut with tape. So I could show you the difference that it makes when you're using tape and not using tape. Again, I'm going to use my roller here to get good contact. Okay, so let's peel off the tape and we'll get a closer look. So you can see there was some serious issues there as far as tear out goes. There's a big chunk right there. And that pencil line marks where I started using the tape. You can see it maintains a nice crisp line all the way down. Blue tape, just one of those things to put in your toolbox of tricks. Now keep in mind, you can look all around in the house, in the shop, at the store, and find a ton of things that could have a use and really become an asset in the workshop. Don't be afraid to find a little magic in the mundane. Thanks for watching.